My name is Hildur Kristjánsdóttir and I'm a midwife from Iceland. I'm currently the president of the Nordic Confederation of Midwives, so I'm here in that capacity. I'm also working as an assistant professor at the University of Iceland in midwifery education. I have been working in antenatal care, childbirth care, and I have for 10 years I worked at the Directorate of Health, which is on a ministerial level in Iceland. And there I worked with all sorts of specialist uh, questions and uh, clinical guidelines. I have four children and I have nine, eleven grandchildren, I mustn't lie. In your experience, what would you say are the greatest threats to uh, the midwifery practice in the Nordic region? Uh, it depends a little bit on in what country you are, but generally speaking, it's the centralization of the childbirth places. It's uh, in many ways strange that uh, all women, healthy or not healthy, should give birth in an acute setting, which is not happening in other uh, healthcare. So if you're healthy, you are put into a, an acute hospital ward, instead of giving birth in a birth center or at home, possibly. So the biggest threat, in my opinion, is this centralization of birth places. And we have seen in some of the countries that children are being born on the road or they are being born in an unplanned home birth and that we are not happy about that because that can be dangerous. Another thing is understaffing. Because what has happened is that they have the self-standing birth centers have been closed down, midwifery-led birth centers, but the staff has not moved when they have moved the births over to the birth clinics or the hospital wards. So the staff, the staffing doesn't, uh, isn't in appropriation with uh, the number of births and uh, the needs of the women. So these are the threats that we are facing, I think mostly at the moment. And in your um, opening this morning you spoke about uh, the importance of midwives to raise their voices and yes. to um, to realize their power. How can midwives gain an influence in political settings? Well, I think maybe uh, Francis de Sturck mentioned this very well when she showed us the video about leadership. If we we need only one midwife with a strong voice to start this and I think we need to recognize this power within ourselves so that means that we have to be retrospective in, in many ways or introspective. We need to stop loving our work so much and start trying to get into the politics, you know, be members of part, poli political parties and get into parliament to become ministers, to become uh, chairs of, like for example in the Faroe Islands, a midwife is at the thing, look, thing at that, this, there, and she is, listen, she's head of the finance committee. And these are positions that we need to be in, because these are committees and uh, uh, positions that really can have some power. I think maybe the chairman of the finance, finance committee has more power than the finance minister. I'm not sure, but he probably signs the bill but so we need to get into the political arena more than we have done fantastic mm -hmm. thank you and Hilda why did you choose to become a midwife uh, I told you the story when uh, I lived here in Sweden and we had this I lived on a campus really my father was a doctor and he was training uh, specialist training and uh, there were midwives and nurses living next door, so I thought they were very, very beautiful. And they were very, you know, they had these uh, uniforms that were so uh, fancy. And then when I had my ch first children, I was attended to by wonderful midwives. And to joke a little bit, they were extremely pretty. And I thought, well, if I learn midwifery, maybe I can be as pretty as them. That's a joke, but it says something, because uh, you, I've had this feeling that midwives were powerful persons, and we are, in the sense that we are, we are fighting for women, 
and I have a very... I want to do that. I have done that, and uh, I want to continue to do that.